Welcome everyone to another IT video log. Today I will really start with the P3. Not that it's the last P3. Fans unsubscribe here and start calling me a liar or something. However, we will start this slowly because the problem with the P3 is the video driver stuff is only half of the work. The other is getting a bootable T2 image, which I have not done 10 years ago because the P3 was one of the first to use some petite boot loader, so not a normal boot loader like Yaboot or Grub, but some Linux kernel based init RD system. And I never bothered to set this up just for the P3 back in the day. So we need to do this for you guys to get ESOs at home. And another complication is that the Linux kernel developers in some kernel some three, four years ago changed the device tree. The device tree is some structure telling the Linux kernel where the hardware is, like I.O. addresses, memory addresses, interrupts and such. And in their infinite wisdom, they changed the format. So the custom firmware from quite some years ago that I have on here and maybe others of you have is not compatible with the latest kernel. So the latest kernel we currently can boot with this structure, this device tree structures is maybe something like 3.12 or something. And not to complicate things because so see, this is also why I was not that motivated to work on this the last month. I had other things to do. I wanted to grow the channel and I cannot only do P3 stuff. And there are the things I can't use the latest kernel because of this device tree. I don't have a bootable ESO because of petit boot and then all the graphic work. So to make things more interesting because it's not so much fun to fiddle around with this device tree stuff, I will probably try to do this last. So first I want to get a bootable ESO because that should be the same for new kernels and should be the lowest hanging fruit there. Then I will do most likely graphic stuff because this is also the most interesting stuff and getting something nice and working for me and you. And then last but not least we will update this to the latest kernel because this also likely involves me flashing new custom firmware there and I do not want to ruin this currently booting stuff because currently I have a custom firmware that runs Linux with GameOS with all the privileges and also one SPE more 7 instead of just the 6 that we got historically. So I do not want to break this. This is why we will do this last and all the other more fun stuff and non-breaking stuff first and also the very first step getting a bootable ESOS to you at home for the audience to follow at home. And to start with this, the problem is also the fiddling around video log episodes are not the most successful. So we will start light and make sure to share, like and subscribe because if nobody watches this and only votes a stone, I'm obviously not that motivated to continue with it. A little bit like ThinkPads and this needs charging. And also even here, they had already this serial defects, this small edge here was prone to break and this is already a brand new top cover replacement of their extended warranty replace problem but unfortunately this also broke already there is a small plastic piece hanging there really sad um, i think nearly each of my Macs had a serial defect and i will probably make a video about this also the reason i took this out is not only to charge the battery i remembered the last time i booted this there was some intel DRM regression that I wanted to report that maybe some of the Intel people may fix. This is some Intel integrated graphics, either 965 or 3400 something. Also, we need a nice dongle for this because at that day and age, Apple was already the master of dongles. So this is a mini, what was this called? Mini, don't even remember what it was called. Mini DVI, need to Google, whatever. So yeah, and also, this Nuevo developer sent me a message. I can try some NVBIOS equals open firmware. Let's see if this changes something using this Apple PowerPC open firmware. You see the bridge there to the P3, all the small side projects we are working on. And I also want to experiment because I'm working on making a daily IT vlog interesting enough people to tune in on a daily basis. So let's maybe try to plug this in without the extender. And if you have ideas how to make this even more interesting and more people share, like and subscribe, just let me know in the comments below. 
So this may be slightly difficult as always to get in here. This is why I used this extension cable before. It took quite press some cables out of the way there. This card just got very hot and I thought it's maybe also nice to show this without this PCI extender, not to have always the same repeating content. And also this card got plenty hot laying there without airflow. It's also a serial ATA cable. Maybe we want to move this out of the way. Price of compact cases not only in the Apple Mini, also when you do it yourself. So let's see after getting the cables a little bit more out of the way there. You probably understand why I got this PCI extender exactly not to have to mess with the cables all the time. Maybe I get it out again. It's way more practical for testing. And there was a time when Apple could still manufacture Macs with Ethernet. Awesome, isn't it? And then this dongle. So yes, this is a proper display with some ports. Just another DVI cable, no problem. And a dongle, because dongles and adapters, but this is maybe not putting so much pressure there on our precious rare adapter. And uh, by the way, this battery is also not so original anymore. So our portable Linux installation here. So this is only USB 2, but no problems. And also recently, just the other day, Apple and Amazon announced they partner there for their sales. This is also really sad that they ban all the third party suppliers there because this battery is not original anymore and Apple is not selling them. So good luck finding then spare parts and you can go to eBay or wherever. It's of course silly that you can't get aftermarket batteries when Apple is not selling them anymore. And I also do the videos to show how much work everything is. I cannot leave everything plugged in here each day. We also have other things to work on. And then if this open source, could you, can you just test me this or that? This often involves getting things back together again. So all the IT testing and development takes quite some time. Oh, all the hub enum rated. And probably this thing is just what I remembered. I think the last time I tested this, I wanted to switch this off already and then just by picking up a phone or something, I left it running and it continued like this here. And as far as I remember, this was the DVI output. By the way, why is this so big there now? Or is it no hanging completely? Yeah, thank you very much. But today is graphic episode, just what we will be getting into with the P3 anyway. So I tried here and uh, ETC conf hardware is T2 or Rock Linux. Related, not sure how many other distributions have this. You need to put your module parameters somewhere else. I just use this to inject any manual tinkering just before all the automatics to not to have to fight with all the automatic UDEF and whatever. Besides, I'm not using systemd anyway for various reasons. So I tried Inovo with um, open firmware, which did not work. I did not know that this option exists, but it didn't work. And here's the BIOS that I got for testing and this is overriding the card BIOS and it is loading this from the normal file system. And as you can see, this just works. I just probably don't have X on this. I could theoretically plug in my portable system there. So this Mac cards can work in theory when either the Novo driver gets fixed or you override the card BIOS or you flash the card, which I would not do because I would theoretically put it back into a G5 Mac. In case I ever wanted this, as I said, this is LE version. I upgraded to the 7000 whatever something GT, which was too loud. And then I got a non LE, which at least is twice as fast, I think, twice the shaders and texture units or something, because this is fanless and passive cool. Although it's getting mighty hot without airflow there. And coming back, I cannot hack on everything myself, but this is yet what we are helpful to support other people and entertain and educate you. And what we can do is at least help other people because not everyone has this exotic combinations. Where is our 
So let's see. Do we have at least we have touchpad here? Actually, should this be running? Does this mean this is enabled for the tower? Okay, let's see DVI one. But I also want to show the audience at home, the normal users. Uh, what was it? Output? Maybe DVI. Ah, we have picture. That actually not even really expect this anymore. By the way, the, the colors on this old TN display are also in nature, much too bright. Um, this, oops, just touching the cables here, right? Super smart move. And here, here you see the oops that I wanted to report. Intel get load detect pipe. Yeah, many of this or so. Are they all? Yeah, they're all in Intel get load detect pipe. Wait, Vulcan. Mm. Yeah, this is exactly why I took this out again, not only to charge the battery, also to report this because obviously I want all the open source drivers bug free and regressions free because I like this black very much, really ThinkPad like. It's quite ironic that the new Macs all have aluminium because I never liked this aluminium when I got. The first Mac I said multiple times, the iBook in 2003 or so, I only got for the power PC CPU. And I did not even like the aluminium power books for many reasons. I never, I never liked the aesthetics. I also never liked that they are hot in the summer, cold when you unpack them in the winter, and scratch and dent, and also the unibody dent less, but nonetheless scratch. And everything for me it is super ironic that Apple is not only producing Macs in the form factor and design and materials that I don't like, but that's what you get from not having a choice. Thanks God we have a choice. And now I need to log in there at some open source Intel driver thing. Yeah, super bright lighting. Obviously, does this still work? Hey, this works. At least something works. Um, yeah, now I need to look in there and uh, in some bug tracking thing and reports is there. I hope you like this vlogs and share, like and subscribe because I rely on your share, like and subscribing to bring me enough income because right now it's $3 a day and I need more than $3 a day to full time hack on things like this. And no, I don't want to snake you and piss you off. This is just the reality of the economics. If I sacrifice my commercial developer income working here for hours, weeks and months on P3 graphics. I need some alternative funding for this. And I obviously need more than three US dollars a day to pay my rent. But nonetheless, we're already here doing this for the fun and education. But of course, it would be awesome if we can also live from this. So give it a thumbs up, share, like and subscribe. And I also in some minutes start a new PowerPC build to have some ESOs to spin for that. So one of the next videos will be testing ESOs to share on the P3. So what an interesting coincidence. So not only was here a bug already, and of course as usual it's already pretty old. These are really the times when I'm not the greatest fan of open source or maybe it's also maintained by companies, open source project problems anyway. So here's one report bug 93782 reported in January 2016, so already soon nearly three years, at least more than two and a half. And of course the same symptoms, the same backtrace, and this was with kernel cut here. That must be, um, should, ah here, 4.4. So since 4.4 at least, we have this issue with some stupid TV detection that nearly nobody has anyway. And even while I was posting this, so first I opened a new bug, which surprisingly was relatively quickly closed as duplicate, just while I found this and wanted to close it as duplicate anyway. And just this moment also, while we are filming this, so this is really 14.30, just exactly the minute I even got to conflict while updating this submission here. Fix is posted here. Our TV encoder support isn't in the best shape here. No shit, Sherlock. And here, now I can compile and test this. Just this kind of things open source people do the whole day, improving things and everything. So let's 
testes I would say do where do we have cover letter revision one where do we have the so many others don't do they all belong to one bug so many changes or what hmm. okay let's test and download it this here as one single patch however it obviously will take forever to build here on this dual core from a decade ago until core 2 duo 2.4 gigahertz or so on the other hand it would be slightly interesting to see how long this is building but i think i will not wait here for hours and instead plug this into something more powerful or even build on the server so let's see what we are getting of course i built on the Ryzen with 16 threads this was just unbearable and yeah this is how it should be without any minutes of stalling there i think it was even two times or something for whatever reason first loading the actual kernel driver i then in red 65 or what it was and second then i don't know even when maybe switching the console font or something silly as this but this is of course how it should be here yeah, also no hang here during x render even that was hanging before so yeah it's of course really ironic that just the day i make this video after two years they fix it just this day even causing a conflict when i submitted this yeah, but that's how it is in the software development world. I hope you learned something. Give it a thumbs up if you support open source development and testing. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.